new region, new playable character, new nemesis system, and much, much more. In this video, we'll break it all down. May 8th, the Desolation of Mordor story expansion will bring us a lot of interesting new content, like the before mentioned features among many. I haven't been playing this game in a long time because of obvious reasons, but the new expansion has piqued my interest again. Let's start with the new region, Litlad. Litlad is the region east of Gorgoroth since it's more towards Harad, the big desert of Middle-earth. This region is also very desert-like. At the top of the region you can find the Marauder Fortress, which will be central to the story. How? We don't know yet. But amidst the region you can find the Oasis, which is home base for Baranor and his mercenaries. Across the region you can find and explore ancient Numenorean ruins for artifacts of power, which we'll get to later. What must have caught your attention are the giant bones scattered across the desert floor. Together with this concept art, it looks like these could belong to a new type of drake or dragon. And as it's a desert, you can expect sandstorms. Moving on to the wildlife of Litlet. Nothing has been confirmed yet, but we can expect at least the same beast as in the other regions. Perhaps even a region-specific elemental grog, which would be fucking nice. Besides this, of course, the Wereworm has been confirmed. As mentioned, the concept art makes me think there are gi giant dragons or drake. But one more thing has me speculating. Thorfinn's presence, as well as some tusk-looking bones, make me think that there are possibly either Great Beast, Mumakil, or both in the region. Sadly, we'll have to wait for this to be confirmed. Personally, I'm not too hopeful, because they only mentioned and showed the Wereworm on the official poster. And Great Beasts and Mumakil are something you might want to show to get people excited. So yeah. Let's talk Baranor and what his change of character means for the gameplay. Baranor is rocking his new outfit with new weapons, sword and dagger similar to Talion. But he also wears the multi-tool on his left arm. This at least gives him the option to select a grappling hook and a shield. The multi-tool and the ancient Numenorean artifacts are probably here to take the place of the skill system as well, possibly called Augments. What other skills there are is currently unknown, but we know that some of the things Bernard can do, as he is uh, not a raid or he doesn't have a, a ring of power. This also means he simply can't respawn. The rogue system, as it's called, will have you start over from the start of the expansion actually. And with this you will probably keep your unlocks like skills and gear. But what exactly you will keep and what you will not keep is unknown. Because of this reason, he also can dominate orcs, so Monolith changed the nemesis system accordingly. Instead of dominating orcs, you can hire mercenaries, the so-called vanishing sons. These are Haradrim and Easterling warriors. Uh, or mercenaries that are local bandits and apparently fight against the orcs. You can hire them using an in-game currency, probably Mirian, but this hasn't been confirmed. These Easterling or Haradrim warriors also have different type of soldiers, similar to the classes of the orcs. We have the warrior, savage, archer and defender, we've seen this in the gameplay. But there also might be hunters, I'm not sure. But we haven't seen those yet. But the Warrior, Savage, Archer and Defender have been confirmed. And that's what we know so far. Now, before ending the video, I would like to know what you like most about the new expansion. Think of anything that's different from the base game. From the new playable character and its mechanics to the new region and its beast. Let us know in the comment section down below. And I hope to see you next time. Peace out.